Is one of these compasses inherently better than another? Is the compass holding you back? How can you determine how accurate your compass is before you step out? We're talking about compass here, and in this one, we're gonna put all of these to the test. Let's get to this. to find out which one is the best and which one is the worst. Right, we're looking at the Brunton Compass. This one is made right here in the United States and this particular one was made before 1991 and issued and supplied for a Marine Corps survival kit. We're looking at the Turn On Sport. This one is made in China of all places. And of course it is one of the cheapest, most popular compasses on Amazon. We're looking at the Silva. This is one of my favorite base plate compasses on the market and I've been happy to be able to use this out in the field quite a bit. Of course we're looking at the mirrored Saunto. This is made in Finland and it is highly regarded as one of the best compasses on the market. And then we're also looking at the Lenzatic compass that the military has been issued largely unchanged since World War II. Two. Team, welcome to the channel, man. As always, I'm stoked to see you. In this video, we're going to determine if the compass is your problem. Now, I'm coming at you right off of the road. We're going to show you right where we're at on the map. And so that intersection right there is right here on the map. And as you can see, this road moves exactly north and south. Of course, that's grid north and south. All down this entire road right here, moving grid north and south, is probably about well, it's a couple miles. You can see on the map, it's quite a few grid squares. This is a perfect place and a perfect location to come out to. And odds are you have something just like this in your area. Some sort of feature that is linear, that moves directly north and south or east and west. That makes it the, the sure, fast, easiest way to do this. There are some other ways to determine if the compass is your problem, and I'll show you those in later videos. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few compasses. We're going to see what they shoot here and then we're going to take it to the map and we're going to determine the compass error that is built into the compass before we step out. All right so the first one that we're going to look at is the Brunton. This was from the 1991 United States Marine Corps survival kit. And again, I'm looking straight down this road, which runs perfectly north and south, and that's grid north and south. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot an azimuth down the long axis of it. And I'm going to call that 17 degrees. Not my lime green pencil. Sorry about that, Joe. Forgot it at home. All right, so next up, turn on sport. This is the cheapest base plate compass on Amazon. And again, I'm gonna call that 17 degrees. Of course, the Brunton is over 20 years old. This one's brand new. And I'm gonna actually shift this so that when you see me uh, shooting an azimuth, you can hopefully kind of tell, I was trying to get the road in the background. Uh, but I want you to understand that I, I'm looking down the long axis of this road directly. Except we have a Silva. I love this one. And I'm also going to call that 17 degrees. We're starting to see a pattern here. Next, uh, second to last, we have a Sunto. This one is a compass. This one is a... Right next up, we have a, the Sunto. This one is a uh, mirrored base plate compass. And I'll use it as design. That one I'm going to call 14 degrees, actually. That's, a, that's interesting. Now at least we have a little bit of variation in our compasses. Of course, last but certainly not least, at least we're going to see if it's not least, we have the United States government issued Lensatic compass made by Kamanga. And I will also shoot this one as designed. And I'm going to call that 15 degrees. All right, and of course, with all of these, they're all shot about six feet away from the camera. There's no overhead power lines. There's, there's no electromagnetic interference. There's nothing ferromagnetic on my person. 
And so we're gonna see that there is a little bit of difference here, right? So I have three of them with 17 degrees, one with 14 and one with 15. So now what I need to do is take it to the map. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna spin down here and we're gonna look at the map information is good as of 2006. Right, so in 2006, we look at the declination diagram and it tells us that the magnetic angle or the GM angle was 17 and a half degrees. But that was back in 2006. In current day, in 2022, the declination for here in this area is 15 degrees. Okay, so 15 degrees. Let's take that back to what we had written down. We had 17, 17, 14, and 15. So what we're showing here is that with three of the compasses, there is an error of two degrees, just in and of itself, before anything else happens. With one of them, there's an error of one degree, and one was spot on. Now, is two degrees going to make a difference? Odds are no, and I think all of the manufacturers of all compasses are going to tell you that they're going to allow a variation in where their compasses are pointing to up to two to three degrees, right? But what you need to do, because some things can happen to your compass that is going to cause a permanent variation in your compasses, and this is a super easy test that you can do every time that you move out before you start to step it out using your map and your compass that we've demonstrated here in the short easy video that the air that the reason that you're having problems is not your compass the compass is not your problem the compass is not your problem those compasses are a precision instrument they're a tool that is only is as good as the person who is holding them and it is super easy to blame the tool i've done it in the past and i have witnessed countless of students blame the compass the compass led them in the wrong direction no the compass led you to where you were trying to go the reason that you have an issue talking to these students was more in line with their plotting it was not accounting for declination it was an error in their distance and direction team one of the things that you have to be able to do is trust your tools. And the way that you can do that is by getting out and mastering the craft of using them. We need to move from being a framer where it's okay if you leave some quarters and dimes in your two befores and we need to turn ourselves into craftsmen of fine furniture. When you do that, you have that much more degree of safety when you step out here in the woods. Team, I hope you appreciated the content of this one. If you did, make sure you like it. More importantly, leave some comments down below. That way we can continue to master our craft and develop our tactical virtue. As always, until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.